I didn't believe it at first, but now I do. Ever since I started photography in 2015, the one question I had is how can I maximize what I already have? If you ask yourself this question, it might lead you to a never ending search to improve your images. And the result of that research indicated to me that I needed to understand and study lighting, something I still do to this day. Lighting alone, without any other manipulation, can make your images or your portraits stand out from the crowd. That will never end. But the other part of that quest or that craft is how do I craft this final image to reflect my end vision? This is important and a difficult process, as you know. So since 2015, you know, develop that. I've been a Lightroom and Photoshop user. I then bought a Sony camera and that changed everything. Sony's strange color science combined with the way that Lightroom would deal with them was not great. To top it off, there were some performance issues that were in Lightroom that made me lose my appreciation for selecting, calling, and editing images. If you still are using Lightroom, do you notice like a painfully slow calling of images and many, many, many crashes in Lightroom and the huge amount of disk space that it uses? This is just my experience on top of many other issues. In sum, I got tired of Lightroom. But don't get me wrong though, Lightroom has made some really great improvements with, and I have to say it, neural filters. A great example of that filter is subject selection, which we'll talk about later. But there's still gaps that I saw, and by switching to Sony, I became more and more curious about Capture One, and I always had Capture One in the, my disc, and would occasionally open it from time to time, but I never went really deep with it. Most of my friends and colleagues would strongly suggest that I give it a fresh shake. You probably get the same comment or suggestion, but I never had time to do it until many days ago. So with the holidays approaching and some time off ahead, I made the commitment to completely switch from the Capture One in the next three months. And here's what I learned in those 90 days. So the Capture One workflow is complex, but it's a good thing. Hear me out. I started this whole video about searching for a way to maximize my images. And how can you achieve more with a simple tool? If you want depth, it requires complexity. Lightroom has a more intuitive and user-friendly interface and it makes it easier to use for beginners. Capture One on the other hand has a more and more complex interface that requires more time to master but it does provide a great control and customization option. I think the idea behind Capture One was built behind being able to customize every aspect of your workflow from the way you import your images to all the way that you export your finals. I'll use myself an example. My workflow when retouching a single image, I would do some basic adjustments in Lightroom such as exposure adjustments and white balance corrections and cropping. Now that I have Capture One, it gets even better. I get to do all of these things. Plus I can start skin corrections for color, general color grading and style choices. And if I want to push it even further, I can actually even start correcting close color. Color grading is something I had to do in Photoshop and that took a lot longer. I can take all of the settings that I gathered in Capture One and export them to a multitude of image and make sure they look exactly the same on the interface. Like no more reworking an image twice because I got some grading wrong and funky at the end of a workflow. You can see it immediately. I mean, if you want an even more concrete example, I even had regular clients telling me that my image or the look of my image improved. It's not a catch one, of course, but it definitely helped. Depth is achieved. Question, are you also shooting with Sony? Once you try Capture One, you'll understand that Capture One understands colors. There's no ifs and buts about it. Lightroom doesn't even come close to understanding how to read or understand human skin, especially with combined with the Sony system. I was shocked when I started editing an edge shot and I just imported the image on Capture One and without doing anything, it looked way better in Capture One than the back of my camera. Yes, Lightroom has an HSL function that can do some of those adjustments, but it's limited. In order to correct skin tones in Lightroom, I run a lengthy process of in Photoshop that involves brushing, masking, adjusting images, and it costs me up to 10 minutes per image done this way. On Capture One, on the other hand, offers me a color picker where I pick the best skin tone, and I proceed to correct the U, saturation, and lightness of the image at the ease of a slider. It cost me less than two minutes to set up one image, and I can copy that setting to the rest of my gallery. That's a lot of time saved, and we get paid for time. If your work involves human, food, or anything color sensitive, get yourself a tool that works for you, not against you. I've 
come to the weird conclusion that the people in Lightroom might hate us. While Lightroom is not as terrible as Premiere Pro, which I'm still using in Photoshop, Lightroom has been a buggy and crashing mess. Culling, selecting images, and selecting photos shouldn't be that painful. Even though the preview is built in, Lightroom takes up to 20 seconds in my case to bring up an image to its full resolution, whereas Capture One lets take less than 3. And if I want to skip the one-on-one -on -one view and just make sure that the eyeballs are sharp, I just have to use the loop function, and I know it's sharp, I can move on. Selecting images and culling might sound like complaining, but when you do 20 headshots in a day of 20 different people, well, even 10 seconds stacks up. Also having Capture One open on my computer versus Lightroom is night and day. Lightroom makes my, all of my other processes slow, especially if you're working off a large database and it's tons of storage and it's not working properly. Capture One on the other hand doesn't seem to be too affected by this issue. I don't know how, but they do. Now, not everything is perfect. Well, this is where you experience mind vary, so take whatever I'm gonna say with a grain of salt. In my experience, I've come across some weird bugs in Capture One while rendering some images, for example. For some odd reasons, exporting a JPEG takes way too much time. But lately, with a update, it seems to be fixed, so okay for now. Another issue is, why aren't there more lens profiles? We're not in the era of CandyCon. There's so many lens manufacturers, like first, second, and third party. It's time to expand that. Also, if you shoot while on the white background or a solid color, you must know that Lightroom neural filters are absolutely incredible at cleaning up solid backgrounds and smart selections are amazing. You can make short work of cleaning up a white background in Lightroom by just selecting the subject from the rest and doing the adjustments. I was so hyped when I discovered this in Lightroom, I even made a video on my personal channel, so if you wanna check it out, you can go ahead. Neural filters and smart selections are the only thing keeping Lightroom alive in my computer. And if Capture One decides to actually invest and offer object selection, or even subject selection, it's pretty much game over for Lightroom. Also, Lightroom seems to be a little better when recovering exposure, but that's up to debate, and you can check the comparison now. That's just my opinion. So, I'm asking Universe, please, Capture One, make neural filters with object selections, please. And the final point, subscriptions. This is a part of the review that I had to redo, actually, because I previously recorded another version, and I wasn't agreeing with myself. And for this, I really like your input below on what you think about the pricing of Capture One. Because when I recorded originally, I was saying, well, it's expensive, you can still buy the permanent license, and after about 32 months, it would become a worthy product to have if ever you're thinking of long term. With that in mind, if you want to keep like all the new features that will be provided in the future, you'd have to buy upgrades every now and then. And if you buy, let's say, the monthly payment, uh, which is actually now more expensive than Lightroom. So I'm not sure where I stand with this. Although I understand the move from Capture One from moving from like a permanent license to a subscription model uh, so that like it's more flexible, you can have streams of income that is not depending on how many cells you run, etc, etc. It sucks for us. Like meaning everything that we use now is literally based off like chipping away at your credit card and like basically creating a new floor for your spending every single month. Although I do think that Capture One in itself is a better software than Lightroom, and it is now more expensive. Like I think it's down right now $15.99 for the product. You can still save some money by using our code below and get 20% off. But still, if you buy it raw without anything, $15.99 compared to $12.99. Again, that is depending if Lightroom decides not to increase the pricing. So for that portion, I'm still unsure about which solution is the best. In my opinion, Capture One is better for professionals or people that want to go further and further into their images, as I said, but Lightroom is still a viable solution if ever you want to save $3 per month. So help me out in the comments below and let me know what you think. If you're interested to help you guys out, you can do two things to save a few dollars also and try Capture One. You can actually try for free, no credit card, just an email. Make sure you get educated also on Capture One by watching, subscribing to the Sharpen channel. We have a lot of content coming up. And also, while this video was not sponsored by Capture One, although they did have videos sponsored by Steve and Rob specifically, you can use the code in the pinned comment to save 20% off your subscription plan at Capture One. Now, I know it's not perfect, but still money saved. Now, did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments what feature you'd like to see in Capture One and what was your experience with it, even by switching. By giving your input, it also helps the YouTube algorithm and it's a great way to help us. It win-win. 
And if you want to really help us out, make sure to subscribe and share the video for maximum spread of the Capture One Gospel. This has been Evans B for the Sharpen channel. Out.